Okay, it's June 18th, 2019. This is my second go around with this, so we'll see. <laughs> we'll see how this goes. Um, so I've been I've been hanging out with with KJ and talking with him more, you know, doing shows and stuff. And I'm still working on this technique of this this riffing style technique of you know maybe having one or two jokes and then riffing in between. Um, and it's it's it, I understand the concept of it at this point. Like I think I understand it on a technical level, um, but I I think the what's really important about it is uh, is being like comfortable in yourself. So the 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 te if I were to break it down technically, all it is is you get on stage, you you have a topic in your head or whatever, or you're just talking about something, and then the riffing or you're doing your jokes, and the riffing part is is painting a picture. For the audience, purely from your perspective. If I were to put it in as few words as possible, that that's what it would be. So I understand that concept, but applying that concept requires like an unwavering confidence within who you are as a person. Um, okay, who you are as a person. So yeah, and talking with with KJ, I mean, not only is he is he older. But I I feel like he's been he's been based off of what I've gotten to know about him, he's been raised in a situation where being finding yourself or being who you are is valued, and I feel like I've been raised in a situation where <laughs> that is not at all valued. Um, like so, I, for, if you don't know by this point, like I grew up around. White people, predominantly fucking racist white people, and um, in that type of situation, and in, in the type of family, like my my mom's side of the family, um, their way of dealing with that. I think that there's, if I were to split black people up in two camps, and this isn't a um, this isn't a critique on either group, um, but if I would, you know what? If you've ever watched The Proud Family, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. There's this episode where. They're having a family reunion, and the character name was Penny, Penny Proud. No, is it Penny? Hold up, let me. I'm gonna check this shit out. Okay, yeah, Penny, Penny Proud. Um, so they're having a they're having a family reunion, and Oscar, the dad, his his mom or his his family comes, and then Trudy's the mom, their family comes, and those were the the bet like that is literally to a T my mom's side and my dad's side it was weird so like the, the the two camps are the black people that have learned how to kind of chameleon and assimilate and and um match you know speaking styles and, and this isn't to say that this isn't also how they are just as people but there is this sense of um of like just chameleon just trying to chameleon to survive i mean i've told uh, a fair amount of people like my my you know I have long hair now but I wasn't allowed to have fucking hair back then because I my mom was like I don't want a bigger target like I'm already getting harassed by the cops I'm already getting harassed by skinheads I'm already getting shit from other people's families when I come over like the, I don't need long hair to add to that um and so so you know my my mom's side is about assimilation and trying to trying to succeed within the system and then and then you have the other camp of black people who who are about like you know getting aggressive fighting back you know not not assimilating essentially and i i don't think there's i think that there's pros and cons to uh to both styles of survival and I think that at the end of the day, as black people, we're just, all we're trying to do is just fucking survive this. Whether it be working within the system or working without the system. Um, and so just in the, in the way I've grown up, it's like working in the system because you're surrounded by it. You're not around other black people. You're surrounded by fucking white people who want you to act a certain way. And even when you do act that way, then there's some other fucking, I don't know, I'm ranting, I'm getting on a whole other tip here but um yeah trying to figure out who you are so it feels like so like kj has has grown up in a situation where being who you are is valued and i feel like i've grown up in a situation where it wasn't value at all it was a detriment to your survival 
Um, and so, you know, that, that whole thing, and when, when that's ingrained in you and you've been doing that for 20 something years, that's really, that's a really hard thing to break. Um, and I, you know, it's, to be fun, it's, it's not even something I necessarily want to break. Like I still, I'm going to speak how I want to speak the way, however, the way I carry myself seems to help me with getting jobs and shit, which is nice, but it's also frustrating. It's super frustrating when you walk, like having this fucking hair, Jesus Christ, it has made my life so much harder. When I walk around, I have to like, if, if I, if I, if I need someone to like me or if I need, um, I don't know if I need it to be treated well at all, I have to turn up charm to 11. It's ridiculous. It's so frustrating, but yeah, so there's that. Oh my God, this is gonna, this is an all over the place podcast. <laughs> okay. Anyway, uh, so yeah, that that part of myself I feel has been suppressed a lot, and as of recent, I've been digging it out. I've been been finding it and been figuring it out, and that's that's felt great. But I, I'm just I'm not there yet, 100. percent I don't think. And then um, you know, within my family dynamic. In and of itself, there's a lot of like, a lot of um, don't be who you are, um, and you know who I am has always been a performer, has always been interested in the arts and, and stand-up comedy in particular, and just the way I've been raised has just been like, nope, you can't do that either. So, out in the world in my neighborhood, it's about assimilating and trying to be what other people want you to be for survival, and then within my own family, it's about assimilating. And, you know, being, being whatever the fuck they want me to be for my survival. And then, you know, you go, I go to, it just feels as though there was no escape. And as of recently, you know, I've been finally able to try to dig a lot of that out, but it's not, it's not crystal, it's not fully crystallized yet. Like I, it's frustrating when I, when I, so when I try to do what KJ's, um, suggesting those techniques, what ends up happening is I'll get like a joke in, or I'll get one good moment, which is better. It's better than what I was doing before, which was just pure rambling. It wasn't working at all. Now it's like, oh, I got one, and then the rambling starts. And when I got one, and the rambling starts. So, from what I've been analyzing from the um, the recordings I've been making of myself. I think part of that is that instinct of, oh, I need to perform now. I need to perform. Like if I don't have, when I have, when I have written material and I know what the punchlines are, I can be myself because I know the point I'm trying to make. I can be 100% myself, but I think I've gotten much better at that of like changing that style so it's not so vaudevillian. I mean, sometimes I get big and loud, but that is genuinely me and that's for fun. And then sometimes I'm able to like, turn the dial down and make it quiet and somber and I can turn the dial up a little middle area so I have a lot more control of that with my material with my riffing is where I, I have this issue and it, you know it reminds me of who else does it really well is um, I don't know I never you know it's funny I never even know if he's riffing or not that's how fucking good he is at this but Johnny Gold is so good at being him like just unwaveringly himself so that's what I I'm I'm working on is when I'm on stage to not obviously it's it's weird it's a weird balance like you're on stage to entertain people that's why you're there but you're also on stage to be yourself and to express yourself and if expressing yourself isn't entertaining or funny then you're kind of not doing half your job and if you're only trying to be entertaining and funny you're also not doing the other half of your job so finding that balance is something I'm, I'm trying to do, and um, and I'm getting there. I'm, I'm I really I do feel more confident in the core of who I am. I've uh, on my day to day life I feel that way. But when when you're on stage and the adrenaline kicks in and it's like, be funny now, be interesting now. It, it adds this pressure, which I think is throwing me off a little bit. So. All that being said, I did I did think of baby steps to get better at this technique and to fix this problem, and that that is say a sentence and then pause, 
or say two sentences and then pause. So every time I listen to myself riff, what I end up doing is just ram, just fucking talking. It's like a ball rolling down a hill. It just doesn't stop. And and it ends up sounding nervous and rambling. And it and I, I think the way like if, if you know if you're a comic listening to this and you're working on your riffing, maybe try this with me. And that is just a sentence, maybe two sentences, take a breath and wait. And I, you know, when I, when I watch KJ, when I watch uh, Johnny Gold, that seems to be something that they're doing. It isn't like, there's a lot of comfortable silence. And so um, that's, that's where I'm at with that. I think I have a plan and in, in how to improve the riffing on a technical level. And on a, on a personal level, that's just more going to have to be me being on stage and just kind of getting comfortable. So yeah, uh, ran the light a little bit. Meh.